Hey everybody, here's a quick video, and this is on my uh, my other computer, so it's vertically oriented, and uh, on my Mac, so uh, the audio may not be the same. But um, here's what I'm seeing, and um, so we're gonna look at a couple different time frames. And so what I uh, just getting alerts here, Matic. Uh, so so this is maybe I'll kick it off here. Um, just getting alerts. I am setting a lot of alerts in buy zones. I was going to do a video on Bitcoin. But uh, let me just hop over to Enomatic and see what's going on here. Yeah, so as these come down into these buy zones on the order block detector, especially if they're multiple layers on these, these are the areas long term we're going to want to be buying these. And we're going to look back and say, you know, I wish we, I had picked some up here. And so um, I'm going to get to Bitcoin in a minute. But now we have, so we have the alts taking a deep leg down. We've got fetch coin coming down. Um, and these are the areas to be buying, honestly. Um, I would probably wait until we start seeing our TSI start to turn green. And because, you know, we have our signal lines rolling over. So maybe now isn't the exact time to do this. But uh, especially, I don't know, maybe there's some announcement on this Israel uh, and Iran conflict. But, um, you know, until we see a green marker here, the other thing I'll do is uh, start to do alerts on this. I'm sorry, don't look at that. And... Uh, just, you know, when this go, goes green, we're going to want to know about it. So coming back in here, I want to say crossing up over 20 on the TSI because then that's going to be kind of my uh, buy signal for these to confirm. Now we're in these buy blocks, so, you know, we, the way to play this would be to buy a little bit and, and keep a tight stop loss. So basically... Uh, that's that's really the way to play this. So, you know, we can't control the markets. All we can do is react to that and um, look for these support zones. So if you zoom out on these, you know, Matic, it could dip down lower, but 44 cents, if it goes back to $1.20, and eventually long term, these things are going to, I would imagine, um, Matic's going to be multiple dollars. So so this is a this is a risk favorable trade on, uh, on this. The other one was Fetch. So... Just looking at these, you know, the alts are definitely bleeding today. So fetch is not is not the same. It's not in a buy block zone. However, I would want to have an alert down here around 32 cents. You know, if you could pick up some phantom coin at 32 cents, 30, you know, or 32.50, then hey, that that would be a great buy long term. I know we're terrified uh, about this, how low this will go, but the thing is, and this is why to take small losses early. To have powder dry later is so important because, and that's really what I want to convey to you is like this is you can make some very profitable trades on these if you put a limit buy order in, right down here at say 31.5. In fact, I'm going to drag that down and say if you put a limit buy order there, limit 31.5 right at the midpoint, and we get a nice bounce out of that region, then that would be a nice little trade. Unfortunately, and I guess since I'm off of the Bitcoin. Um, chart here we'll go back to that so please stay with me but uh you know i mean look this uh definitely bleeding off not looking good i bought some solana at 170 160 i'm not going to buy any more <clears throat> at these prices and uh you know definitely seeing a bit of a, a sell-off here but the other reason i'm not going to be selling or wouldn't be selling many of these is you know we're on a down cycle it's what the tldr around all this is i'm learning to trust our indicators even more we had early warning on this and i just ignored it you know on um, these bearish rsis showing bearish divergence we had the tsi going down below 80 and um, you know we had buy blocks up here so you know i'm still learning this is how this whole dynamic works and uh, and there's never and there's never like an absolute these things will always be variable and a little bit of, of gut feel on the AIOZ trade. <clears throat> you know, unfortunately, this is starting to roll over, and uh, I don't like the 2150 rolling over on that. And so um, I had uh, uh, I had uh, sold those. My stop was at 50 cents, so I'm out of the AIOZ, but I'm, I'd like, I like it still. I'll be looking to buy it back when it turns. A lot of volume in here. And just looking at some of these bleeding out like uh, Lido and um, Render. And so anyway, um, let me get back to Bitcoin. I didn't intend to get over that. My alerts just went over. So um, so basically the, the point of all this is that, um, you know, 60K should hold. I'm seeing some support on here on the shorter time frames right at the 60K level on the five minute. On the 15 minute, uh, we have a buy zone in here on 60K, 60,500. And it's hitting the lower band I don't talk about this a lot, but on this uh, VWAP volume weighted average price, essentially, and, and this is probably more than one of most of you want to know, but some of you like this uh, deeper dive. 
the uh, VWAP, uh, the one I use here on the 15 minutes called a VWAP with standard deviation bands version 2. This is a free indicator. And typically when I'm day trading, the lower bands, this if this gets overextended to this outer band on the upside, it will usually revert to the medium. Similarly, uh, when it gets oversold like this, it will usually revert back to the median here. But uh, these are uh, these are um, different time frames. So that's a 15 minute. And um, now in the one hour, one thing I'll note here is that these are all oversold on the TSI. So this is starting to go greens. I think we do get a bit of a bounce, but but how much, you know, this could certainly still go lower. And the how much is the question. So what I'm getting at is I think this probably we will lose 60K. And um, because a lot of people will have their stop losses at 60K and we'll see a stop hunt. And what will happen is they'll, they'll li liquidate and, and wick it down in this 58K region. So I'm suggesting the 58.8 uh, is, a, is a buy zone, and it'll likely wick down and bounce. But um, on the overall scheme of things, I think because kind of what we did in here, uh, the, the next push higher, you know, there's going to be a lot of people looking to sell in here because – like me, they bought in in the uh, hype of Bitcoin, and uh, you know I, I I had an alert. I like to buy into strength, so we were playing and, and positioning ahead of the breakout, hoping this would happen, and uh, of course it didn't. And this was that fifth attempt. So you know I don't just tell you guys this is uh, it's a bit tricky. I posted the uh, descending wedge here, so on the bullish side, these kind of patterns, this wedge pattern here, will typically break to the upside. So what is still bullish about this pattern is if we can put in a higher low. And then what I would what would happen here, <clears throat> just giving you a roadmap, is uh, wherever that higher low happens is we'd see most likely something like this. Okay? And uh, something along those lines. You know, we'll break uh, resistance through here and then break above it, some retest. You know, it doesn't always happen, but uh, something along these lines. You know, maybe not as many zigzags. This is not my best uh, squiggly line indicator, if we can call it that. <laughs> and so, um, so the big question is what happens at this 60K level? And so only you guys can decide what you're going to do. But on the one hand, I would suggest taking a, selling some here if we break it but I do believe it'll wick down it'll take out a lot of stops maybe it liquidates and cascades back into the 55k region but uh, I would be looking for that to hold and then we have a double bottom in here and um, and then we have a room structure to build out of it so you know it's uh, <laughs> that's the question is how far and how long does it take for this descending uh, wedge to take place but it is a bullish pattern traditionally. Uh, even though it looks bearish and it would continue to head lower and lower. So that's what we're watching for. If we start to break up higher, that's bullish. If we keep going down lower, you know, it just means it's going to take longer to come back out of this. But uh, there is still that possibility that that was the top. And, and that's why reading these markets is so difficult. If we zoom out into the larger time frames, it gets a little bit, um, uh, a little bit, um, Sorry, I'm just uh, it's a little bit sort of uh, congested here is the word I was looking for. But here's the thing: like on this, we have a big, a big bearish engulfing candle on this weekly. So the reason the close here for this week tomorrow is so important. So if we close here, you know, that would indicate this thing's going lower. And so what we really need to see is some kind of a rally up out of this. So at least it's not bearish engulfing. The other indicators here are somewhat, they're not helping us in this in this point. And uh, and that's okay. Uh, it doesn't always have to be that way. But uh, I'll, what I am somewhat encouraged about is we don't have that ERI up top. Uh, although, remember when I called this, you know, this is that market top indicator it was a little bit janky because they weren't all perfectly aligned but they were all there you know we have we had the makings of a market top indicator and and um you nobody wanted to believe it i just i need to leave that out there as a possibility so you know if you're in cash right now just to stay out i would say stay out and just wait for this thing to play out and uh, again, I think, you know, so far these these buy blocks on the weekly time frame have held the midpoint. So that's very interesting to me um, again. But it's just like we just don't know how long this thing's going to bleed and take to go higher and if it breaks higher or breaks lower and then higher. So, um, you know, I'm just I'm going to look for opportunities to get into cash personally. I don't like this indecision, and um, there's so much going on here. And, you know, we always we also know that Bitcoin tends to do, do what? 
fools and, and really hurts the most people. And what that means is the bigger players are wiping the table with our chips. And I don't want to have my chips on the table right now for that possibility. You know, if we come all the way back down to 56, if we come back down to 50K, uh, <clears throat> you know, how many of you are willing to ride that out? I'd rather not. I'd rather take some some losses here and be ready to buy back on the turnaround on the turn. So I, you know, I am watching this, but on this monthly time frame, you know, we have a bearish, a very bearish uh, candle here, which uh, and and okay. Well, so this, so this is I haven't looked at this in a while, guys. This this is not looking very good uh, now. The the month is far from over, but we have this big, this red TSI. We have a bearish engulfing candle. And uh, I don't, uh, I don't particularly like that. So if I take this out of the way, um, I won't do that. I'll put that back. Oops, just to see if there was a, a big upper wick. But you know, the signs are here that this is, um, you know, not looking good. We have these topping tails on all these monthly candles. So 69k big sell area. So we, you know, we, we have no one to blame but ourselves for not getting out of this market. And so. Uh, I do want you to protect the downside, uh, not financial advice, it's educational purposes, you know, but because I'm here to protect you guys and uh, guide you, you know, this is the game we play. Our fortune favors the brave, but it also punishes the stupid. And so <laughs> I just made that up. But, you know, we have to uh, not not to say that anyone's stupid if they haven't taken some money out. It is very easy to sort of uh, have deer in the headlights and uh, not want to really look at this and say, well, you know, I'm a long-term holder and just, oh, that's all fine and good. But uh, if we bleed out and have a big, like if, if suddenly, look, if muscles fly and someone drops and drops a nuke, this is the whole market, the whole, the whole global markets are, are screwed. And we'll see the biggest red candle we'll have ever seen. <clears throat> and, um, and, you know, and that would be an excellent buying opportunity. Although I'm, I'm not, I, actually, I'm sorry. I shouldn't even say that. I want to, you know, that means a lot of people. Obviously, uh, that would be terrible. So um, we don't want to. I, I actually shouldn't have said that. I mean, you, you know, all of these natural disasters like COVID, uh, they're wonderful buying opportunities, but terrible for humanity. And so, uh, don't take that the wrong way. But um, you know, uh, this whole thing now in the market structure. If we look at it and really zoom out, however, I mean, look, we could come back to 40K and still be in a bullish, uh, you know, bullish mode. I, I mean, <clears throat> you know, that that's something that we, we just, in the longer term view, do we want to write it down that far? We do, we do not. I, I submit to you, we probably do not come back down to 32K. Now, there are some fairly large shorts out there, million dollar shorts that uh, multi-millionaire shorts who, who think that, hey, we go down to 40K, maybe even 20K. And so um, I just want you to take a few moments and I'm not saying go and sell everything now. I think we, we're going to get a bounce at some point. I'm suggesting maybe consider selling a half, selling a you know, third into the bounce and uh, and just realize that you know Bitcoin's not going away. There's a lot of bullish things around the corner. There's potentially trillions of dollars coming into this market in Q4 when they are greenlit to do so. And so you know, I had posted an article the other day, maybe yesterday, about Morgan Stanley is starting to tell their agents to, hey, it's time to start recommending people to buy Bitcoin. Um, okay, that's great, but that doesn't happen overnight. And so um, certainly they will be buying at any pullbacks the big money will be buying on any pullbacks so it I, as i've said this is this is the hardest inflection point to call and i don't know that you can call it right and so i'm not going to be you know i have called it right i called it right here on the bullish side i called it right here on the sell side and uh, in here i called it right in july of 2021 in this midsummer dip and um i also before I was even doing this with you guys, I called it right at 12,000, uh, right in here. This pattern here on a daily basis, I called it right when it was about to go vertical, and I, I can't claim that. I did post it on Facebook, so I got that right. Um, I'm here to tell you, I don't have a clue right now. And uh, anyone that does either has more information um, or or is going to be lucky. So this is one of those... It, uh, it, it's a wag. It's a wild-ass guess. So just judging from the charts, this is a very bearish candle. I think we could come down lower on this macro, um, sort of a descending, um, what is it called? A descending, a broadening wedge is what the name is. 
So um, we just have to wait and wait and see. But this this concerns me if we do see, and I'll set an alert on this. Uh, but by the by the time this goes below, it may be too late. I'm just going to say crossing below 80, and then I'm going to look to invalidate. But this is kind of like, look, this is time to we. If you're still in the markets at this point, I would say maybe consider just getting out and and stop loss. So that uh, that's about all I wanted to cover here. There's definitely some mixed signals, um, you know, as in terms of learning in a teachable moment. <clears throat> Buy when there's blood in the streets. Remember, if we get, if we're lucky enough, like if we have, if you're in cash, the problem with holding is if it comes down here and you have an excellent buy opportunity like here and you don't have any money because it's all gone down 80%, you're going to really regret not taking a little bit of pain in the meantime. So if we are lucky, just promise me, if, if we're lucky enough to see this, we do have these signals now that this is where we would want to go all in and uh, and not up here, especially when we, we're sort of in this bearish area. So we have a very, very a bearish setup. We have uh, all the way back here, you know, this monthly RSI has been excellent back in April. It's, it's early. It was bearish divergence when this thing started to kind of head over. And so, you know, we're continuing to sharpen the saw. We're continuing to make our indicators better. I will put on a Bollinger on the lower time frames, but uh, there's a lot of things here. You know, we're still bullish on a weekly somehow and on the quarterly, so I'm still hopeful. But if, if that radar goes all red, guys, we're in a bear market, just want to get out. and and Or, you know, diamond-handed, as Alex said above, on your Bitcoin. But uh, these alts, just keep in mind, like, uh, there's not enough money to support these things. They've gone into meme coins, and uh, the alts, um, you know, some are calling for a big altcoin rally. I don't really see that. But looking back, <coughs> pardon me, in history, you know, on this monthly chart here, uh, bullish ERI, this early reversal indicator on the bullish side, if you get nothing else out of this and you just, you know, hopefully we're still running these signals here for the next 20 years, and some capacity. I don't know that I'll be doing this for time, but uh, but these are those signals that if we just trade these uh, on in the weekly, we want to look for the bearish on the weekly bearish ERIs. So, but look at all these great buy signals here and here and here. The hard part is when do you take your profits? Assuming you did get in here. And look, I you know this is uh, we were doing a lot of what's going on here and pontificating, trading alts and and uh, but in the if you really zoom out, if we just did that and nothing else than that then that would have uh, served as well. On the on the top side, just looking out in history, you know, this hasn't always been a good indicator of the top necessarily. We had uh, sort of turning over in this range in 2021. We actually really haven't had a big TSI uh, going red. And, um, and this, this is concerning. So we have RSI and uh, the TSI turning red. And so um, it, it's really 50-50. It's a mixed bag. So I'm going to stop talking blabbering at you guys now because uh, the TLDR is that uh, we just don't know. Um, bearish engulfing candle potentially forming on the weekly. So I go back to I think I'd like to be out of this market and um, I have a couple Bitcoin. I'll probably keep one. But on any bounce here, which does not look imminent at this point but <clears throat> if we get a bounce the other scenario here and maybe the more likely one based on what I've just covered is something along the lines of a let me get my drawing tool if it will let me do it it doesn't like to let me overlap uh, yeah okay so if we get a bounce into this range you know this is <clears throat> scenario number two and um, <clears throat> Sorry, I don't really want to write it all the way down. So, so that's kind of what I'm I'm saying is that uh, this uh, this is feeling very bearish. Double ERIs on the daily bearish, and we had the weekly all the way back here. Remember, I told you guys. I'm not trying to say I told you. So this has been tricky, but we have another bearish engulfing candle. What I wanted, I'm on, I might pull up the um, the ERI oscillator because we might actually have. An ERI oscillator here, and the arrow is just not showing. And um, so <clears throat> we're going to be watching the weekly close. We're going to be watching the monthly close, although that's a couple weeks away, and a lot can happen there. So uh, anyway, um, consider what I've just shared with you. And uh, if uh, you know, we seem to be kind of holding here in the short term. 
I think uh, they will probably again dip it down below that cascade of liquidations and, uh, and look, you know, try to grab that liquidity, stop losses, liquidations, and then you know we can push back higher. I think we do get a bit of a bounce here, but there's even on the 15 minute. And on the one hour, there's sell pressure now at 63K and all the way up to 66K. So uh, I don't know, guys. <clears throat> I'll leave it to you to make those decisions. 20-minute video wasn't going to make it that long. But, uh, you know, consider also these alts that uh, are not looking great. You know, do they come back at some point on the total market cap, excluding Bitcoin and, and Ethereum? It is trying to hold the 50-week EMA. And we did have a bullish, you know, uh, signal here, which is interesting. But the point is, uh, we've got alerts firing all over the place. So we've got honey going down. Now I have it as a buy. Let me just kind of visit this because it's is important. Uh, this is on the weekly time frame. Now <laughs> these weekly time frames. So this is why I was suggesting AIOZ. Uh, this timing is, is interesting because the TSI weeklies are bullish on these, and so. You know, that's why this is this time is different. Just as Alex said, this is a, a tricky one. We have the TSI rolling over on the daily. Um, I am, would not be buying here. I had it as a buy uh, because it's in this buy block, but it's also sandwiched between these sell blocks. So be very careful with these low volume coins and uh, and stay away from them. <clears throat> this is um, it's going to be a bumpy ride. It's going to be a roller coaster. You know, some of these I still like. I still like stacks. You know, I have these buy signals down in these regions, but you want to have some powder dry. What I would say is start reorganizing your coins in the ones you might want to buy and own. So near looking pretty good, double bottoms, uh, and that I think looks pretty good to me. But it's all going to be, you know, if Bitcoin keeps bleeding, these will also bleed. So these are not going to bounce. We've learned this the hard way. No matter how good the chart looks, this is oversold. Could get a bounce here. On the other hand, so if Bitcoin does bounce, so these will these will bounce very nicely. So I'm going to start prioritizing these and moving them up. So I've got stacks. I've got near and uh, AI, AOZ. I'm still hopeful, you know, but I'm going to be a little more careful here. If we start putting in higher lows, though, that's the key. You know, we're losing this region with the 21 to 50 are rolling over, so that's concerning. So I'm out of AIOZ and uh, Ando and all of these <clears throat> for now. I'll move Ando up, though. The ones that are closest to these support zones, I've already covered that. And so I'll just suggest that you guys do that render. Not looking too good. And Lido, look, these these are just with the whole market they're selling off. And uh, ETH, ETH holding fairly nicely, so I'll put ETH up there. But uh, right now, all I'm holding is Bitcoin and Sol. I have them covered, colored in green. Uh, ETH, ETH looks very interesting here, though. Um, oversold here. We do want to watch for that. I'll set an alert for the TSI to turn over and go green, crossing up over into above the 20 line. That would be interesting. I will suggest this. As, uh, in this next phase, I would be leaning into, layering into, and overweighting Bitcoin, Solana, Ethereum, and a handful of, of these uh, stronger alts, but really stay away from these other ones that uh, are just getting uh, murdered. Like some of these are down 80, 90 percent already, and I don't see that they are going to come back anytime soon. Especially these that have these huge run-ups like Say and Sui. I mean, all the way up here, we were saying, how high can it go? Sure enough, that rolled over. The, this thing could come back down to 13 cents. So uh, say Sui, all of these are sort of uh, they're not ready yet. Later on, they'll they will run. So there might be some good opportunities to be buying them. And um, I I did buy some more uh, <laughs> buy some more uh, Phantom Coin or Pirate Chain, but um, <clears throat> you know it's it's held this region very thinly traded. And look at best, I might get a, a three four X on this if it goes to 60 cents. It's a four X, but uh, but anyway, I think I've rambled on long enough. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, you know, meme coins definitely bleeding out, and um, Brett coin, Brett token. I don't know. I may just sell sell my Brett token. I hate to do it, but um, this thing not looking very strong. And uh, look for lower prices. Uh, let's take a quick look at the DXY. It's strange that the DXY is also dropping though, and uh, it seems to be decoupling from the rest of the market. So um, the interesting times and. Uh, you know, we'll just have to keep an eye on this total market cap. You know, we want to make sure and see if that ideally will hold uh, here, but no real support on the total market cap all the way down in these regions. So, uh, you know, I'll set another alert down on these. I keep saying I'm going to stop the video and I keep adding to it, but I'm um, trying to be brief. And uh, so, you know, just to say, I'll say bounce. I won't say buy. 
But uh, anyway, that's uh, that's what I'll leave you guys with. Um, I know it's, it's troubling, scary, and all this war stuff. But uh, as people, as it gets processed in, uh, then uh, we'll kind of see how it sorts out. But in the meantime, um, you know, that you might want to watch this video again. There's been a lot of, of, of advice, and I, I, I'm trying not to call it advice because it's not financial advice. Legally, I'm not supposed to say that. Um, but in terms of uh, teaching you guys what I'm seeing and uh, giving you some ideas what how to look at this uh, current market. So, all right, guys, take care, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye.